Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us today. Welcome to our fourth installment of DiveSoft Gear Talks Live. Hope everyone's doing good today. Remember to be sure to like, share, and I would say subscribe, but you're already subscribed, right? And so be sure to you know like our the DiveSoft page, like these talks, and be sure to share them so we can get as much audience as, as possible and we can share this information. So today, what we're going to talk about is the DiveSoft computer. Make sure it's not upside down. So I know that it's kind of hard to see, uh, but I have my second camera down below where you guys will be able to get a good view of everything. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the DiveSoft Freedom computer. Um, what's just kind of the ins and outs about it. Um, you know, what, what are the capabilities? How can I dive into the menus? Um, you know, what can I do with this diving computer? Um, and so I'll uh, kind of be jumping back and forth between the main camera right here and then my small camera where my ducks are hanging out right now. Um, what, once we go into the menus and the capabilities of everything, then I will have one taken apart so you guys can see you know, the insides and kind of what makes this freedom computer, you know, as, as awesome as a computer as it is. Uh, and I also have here my li my Liberty head as well. Um, you can see the handsets. They look a lot like uh, the freedom computers, they, except the freedom computer is a little bit thicker um, because these are just displays. And I got a black shirt on. It's a little hard to see, but it's a, you can see the thickness is a little bit different. All right, so let's dive in. So we can throw, we can uh, blow up on the little screen, little camera. There you go. So here we have our DiveSoft Freedom computer. When you open up, when you have a box, uh, when you open up your box, what you're going to have inside. Got one right here for you. So when you open up the box. You're going to have a little information pamphlet. It's going to give you a description of the keys, the main screen modes, uh, kind of a quick reference, just basically how to get started. What the Freedom Computer comes with, right here. So our Freedom Computer has an uh, anodized aluminum housing, so it's super, super robust. There we go. Make sure that it get, gets the right lighting. Um, it's a single O-ring on the back right here, uh, kind of, it's a little dark, I'm gonna try, there you go. So you can see that you have the O-ring, single O-ring on the outside, and then this little pinhole, uh, that's where the depth sensor is. On the back you have the serial number. Now, this uh, computer has two buttons, that's it. Keep it simple, right? So. They're basically magnetic buttons, and they're spring-loaded inside. Uh, in order to keep it watertight, they're just uh, it's just a magnetic contact switch. And then here, we have this little cap, and then this little cap right here on the side is where you connect your charger. So the Freedom computer comes with uh, a Velcro strap, which I have my Velcro strap on this computer is right here. And it also comes with some bungees so that you can set up your computer kind of however way, which way you want to use it. Um, I kind of have it set up like this with a with the fisherman's knot right here that can slide to so it's adjustable. I would I would recommend being careful when you have a single piece of bungee like this uh, because if you do get a cut in it, it's very easy for the entire thing to fall off. So, but you know. Bungee can cut, you know, Murphy's Law, what can go wrong will go wrong. So if you have a single piece of bungee going all the way around like this, it, if it gets cut in the right place, it'll be very easy to come off. So, but these are demo units, so I kind of I kind of rigged them like this so they're nice and quick. Um, to, you know, they're not likely to get cut very often. But anyways, so in our box, we have, we have this different uh, mechanisms for strapping the unit. And then we have a universal charger. This universal charger 
has all the different kind of uh, adapters for different parts of the world. I find it really, really handy, but I have it installed for the United States. And then this is our connector. Uh, you can see this connector is a, it's a little bit different. It's not very typical, but it's designed to thread into, uh, into the computer. And then this is how you charge the computer. All right. It connects like this. This is also how you connect the computer to a desktop computer or a laptop computer, but um, basically via the USB connection. This is, uh, and then this is the connector, and this is also how you connect the computer if you're using uh, with a third-party rebreather. So, uh, but we'll dive into that. So, just wanted to kind of go over what is in the box. Now, I've noticed in pre in old kind of older videos, I my desk gets messy sometimes because I have so much gear I go through. So, throughout this gear talk today, I'm going to be trying to keep the de desk nice and organized. So it doesn't get as cluttered as it has in other videos, right? This time we've got, we're not going to be playing with the floor scene anymore. So hopefully it shouldn't get too messy, right? And an update, you can see my hands. The floor scene kind of came off. That's a little bit from messing with some earlier. But the, the floor scene die came off, so pretty funny. If you guys joined us last week, you saw that. All right. So we, we kind of went on the outside of the computer. Uh, now, what are some of the components about this uh, Freedom computer? It has the vibration alarms, which I find to be really, really handy. I've used a bunch of different computers on the market. The vibration alarms are kind of one of my favorite features. Uh, these computers are, are pressure rated to 350 meters. So they're, you know, because of this solid aluminum body, they're, they're able to handle depth really, really well. These push buttons are, are, you know, usually you have either piezo buttons or you have push buttons or, you know, different kind of buttons. But these buttons are really great when you have very bulky gloves, uh, really great with dry gloves. It's just it's really in low visibility. It's really nice to have that feeling, that push feeling contact. Now I'm going to power it up. So the way that we power up, let me make sure that I'm angled correctly to the computer. There we go. So. The way that we power up this computer is we just hold these two buttons and then you'll feel a vibration and it will power right up. So it's a full color TFT display. And then you have, uh, so this is kind of the, the home screen. We have our date, our time, our battery consumption or our battery status has our default mode, um, you know, default mode is for open circuit for this particular computer. We have our no fly, so you can see that we uh, we haven't done any diving. And we also have a, uh, the altitude. So basically this is the maximum altitude that we can attain right now, you, you know, 16,000 feet. Um, you know, when, you, when you're diving, if you're doing any decompression diving, you'll see that this number changes. Um, it's more common in other countries than the instead of the United States, where if in order to get to and from a dive site, you have to go to altitude or you know come down from altitude. So um, that's not something that I've had a lot of personal experience with, because you know diving in the United States is relatively pretty flat uh, for me personally. So you know. Um, Something else that we'll get into later is that our computer comes in a bunch of different versions. Uh, one of the big strengths of this computer is that you can buy, if you're just getting certified to dive, you can buy a, a basic uh, bottom timer uh, computer, which is essentially just a depth gauge. And as you kind of advance in your diving career, say once you get certified, then you get Nitrox certified, you can, instead of going out and buying a separate computer, you can upgrade your computer uh, upgrade the license for a small fee so the and the prices are based uh, on the freedom computer on our divesoft website the prices are based on which license you get and which is it's a very very easy for uh, license upgrade so and they come in six versions uh, we have uh, the bottom timer we have a nitrox kind of a basic nitrox and then we have an advanced nitrox then we have trimix 
and CCR. So let me see. Uh, and the, there's also, um, I think there's also another one, uh, a fix, um, sorry, a bottom timer CCR. That's where, that's the sixth one. So, but we have the upgradable, the different licenses, which is very, very handy, which is really good. I always recommend it for my students that they buy this computer. They don't have to buy a thousand dollar computer right out the bat. And it's a computer that will grow with them and it'll last forever. The problem is that it lasts so well that they're, you know, they see other shiny things and they're like, oh, I want different colors or something, you know, but they, they have got one computer that's going to last for a long, long time. Also in the case, which I had it outside of the case, is the silicone cover. Uh, these silicone covers are really great. It's, it does a really great job of kind of protecting the outside from any scuffing or any scratches. Um, you know, but the, the only downside of the silicone case is that it's really good at attracting, like keeping in sand and grit and water and whatnot. Uh, so you want to do a, a good job of removing it every once in a while and just cleaning it. Uh, it's good to clean it, you know, with soap and water just to get kind of the dirt and grime off. But these silicone covers are fantastic. I love them. I keep them on my handsets, on my Liberty, and I also have them on the Freedoms when I dive with the Freedoms. So let's dive into let's dive into the uh, the basic operations of the freedom. So I double click to get back into my menu. Let me get a little bit closer. There you go. So I double click, and then you can see right here that I'm in the I have the dive mode. I have to either turn it off, logbook, setup, plan, system check, and different applications and uh, owner information. So, uh, kind of the you know some other some of the other strengths that this computer has, is, you know the the decompression software that it uses is the Buhlmann's ZHL16 uh, with adjustable gradient factors. So it's a, it's a very uh, it's right now it's kind of the industry standard with decompression uh, algorithms, and with gradient factors you're able to adjust the gradient factors to you know, for you. Uh, I know me personally, I do a 40-80 gradient factor and the reasons for that are kind of a little bit deeper, but that's what I find my comfort level in my decompression diving. Now, you know, not, but that's up to everybody and, you know, it's always best to teach a, an instructor who teaches decompression diving. Um, but so before we dive into that, we'll go, so you have our log book, let me go back to it. There we go. So with the buttons, I use the lower button to scroll. And then I have kind of the one top button right here. This top button selects. And then the bottom button, it scrolls down. And then to go backwards in the menu, I push the double button. So And it can also change as you're going. And a lot of the, uh, some of the other features are it has an a gyroscope inside that will, if I'm adjusting numbers, it just uses a tilt feature. So we'll dive into, so I wanted to go to set up my dive computer. Make sure that, there, there we go. So it's a little bit hard to see. Free diving preferences, calibration, and miscellaneous. So for decompression, we can see that we safety stop, ascent gas. So in the ascent gas, you can either change it to your current gas or you can change it into the optimal gas. So that has to do with which mixtures you have available plugged into the computer. Decompression stops, deep stops, and then the rate and zone. So we'll start at the gradient factors. So in order to adjust your gradient factors, we can set our low gradient factor, 30, and then we can set our high gradient factor, 80. So BO, GF, and low. And BO doesn't stand for body odor. It stands for our bailout. So a bailout system is essentially there's an emergency. We're trying to get out as quickly as possible. Remember the gradient factors what they do is they kind of um, they dictate how close we are to the line, 
uh, of our decompression uh, profile. So basically, how close do you want to get to that line? What's your level of conservatism? So the bailout essentially means that I want to get out of the water as quickly as possible. And this is the, and I have it set so I can go out quickly as possible and safely as possible. Now, your typical gradient factors should be pretty different from your bailout gradient factors. Uh, but these, um, so our gradient factors are kind of dictate how conservative we are. Bailout is going to tell me how fast can I get out of the water um, while, while being safe. So say that you had an emergency, you had a rapid gas loss, or you had a caustic, a CO2 hit, um, a rapid emergency that is time to get out. Um, but that's what those bailout gradient factors are for, uh, so that you can still kind of be safe. And basically, you're, you're going to be done diving for the day because there was an emergency. Um, your typical gradient factors, you'll probably continue to keep diving throughout the day if you choose to. Bailout means that there's an emergency. Um, safety stop. We, we always want to do a nice little safety stop. I have it turned on here. Um, our scent gas, like I said earlier, current or optimal. Our decompression stops. So the, the Freedom Computer can do something very interesting. It can either have it set to stops or it can have it set to a ceiling. And you can kind of ride the ceiling uh, throughout uh, throughout your decompression profile if you choose to. So, so the ceiling dictates how high, what's, your, what's the maximum you can ascend to versus a stop is going to dictate like you can, you have to sit at 20 feet for 30 minutes versus the ceiling changes from 22 feet to 21 feet to 20 feet, 19 feet based over time throughout your dive. Now, what's my last stop going to be? I have it set for three meters or 10 feet. Now we have rounding, 60 seconds. So essentially, it's going to round up so that you always spend a, a more time rather than less time. So we can see that the Freedom Computer gives you a very high capability for really kind of tweaking your decompression profile, uh, the deep stops. These are based off of... of piles kind of algorithm for deep stops I typically have them turned off because if you have your gradient factor set kind of appropriately um, I choose to keep keep the pile deep stops off and not do deep stops um, I rather have kind of a longer shallower stop than a, than deep stops during my dive and then you can set the duration but like I said this this freedom computer gives you the options Uh, rate and zone. This is an interesting. Um, so, what this uh, basically what this dictates is your diving profile. Now, this kind of uh, assumes that you're doing a square profile versus, say, you're doing a sawtooth profile in a cave. Uh, this. So, it's so it looks like we're going to jump over to, to kind of this main computer, this main camera right here. So might be having some technical problems with the uh, close-up. So it's going to be interesting. With uh, so like I was saying was uh, with our rates in a zone. So it's based off of the square profile, and in this square profile, uh, you can adjust what is your ascent speed or descent speed throughout the dive. So uh, you can have alarm set that will tell you if you're moving too fast or if you're moving too slow. And so you can set that rate so that it can keep track of that. Now, I'm going to see if we can jump. Let's see if I can get. Now, with the Freedom Computer, let's see. I might need to change. All right. So. Right. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the small camera. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So it looks like it, it picks up a good screen here. So we were in our setup. So 
where I was was just was just in the decompression node of the computer. So you can see that like these the freedom computer is very deep. There's a kind of a lot that we can go through and a lot that we can tweak and change. Mixtures. Let me see. Make sure that you guys can see it really well. Okay. We have our mixture set up. We have our defined open circuit mix. So I have it set to air. And then we have our ending pressure. I have it in PSI. And we have our RMV, our respiratory minute volume. I have it set at 0.9, which is pretty high. Um, you know, it's kind of me on a bad day, right? Um, typically, I want to have the, my RMV rate pretty high. Um, so what we're doing, what our RMV is, is that basically our respiratory minute volume. This is the rate that I'm breathing a cylinder at depth. And I tell the computer, and I need to tell the computer this so that it can basically tell me my gas planning. I have the RMV set pretty high because I want to be conservative, and I want to have. If there's an emergency, what range am I going to be breathing? I'm not. If there's an emergency, I'm not going to be really calm. Uh, there's going to be a problem. I'm going to be breathing pretty fast. Now I know everybody thinks I'm a cool ice man, but my you know, if I get a caustic, if there's an out of air scenario, I'm going to be breathing very quickly. So, or just like if I have to share gas with a buddy who had a gas problem, that we're going to be going through gas a little bit faster. Oh, so you can see that it also it'll time out I'm talking too much. So let's go back to setup and then mixtures. All right, that's where we were mixtures. So we have our defined open circuit mix, air, ending pressure, 500 psi. RMV 0.9. So this is a gas switch. How long is it going to take you to switch between gases? Say that you're going from your bottom gas to oxygen or a decompression gas. How long is it going to take you to switch? Most people like to put two minutes and it will incorporate that in your total time to surface. What's your minimum PO2? So our minimum partial pressure of oxygen, I have it set to 0.18. Uh, what's our maximum uh, partial pressure of oxygen at the bottom, uh, 1.4. That's going to be my maximum PO2. And then what's my maximum PO2 on decompression? I have it set at 1.58. So something interesting. So let's click this, our maximum PO2 on deco. So it brings me to the screen. And you see that the numbers are dropping. There we go. So you see that the numbers are dropping. So the reason why is because I adjust the numbers based off of the inclometer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a flat piece of table that's, and I'm going to adjust it by tilting the computer upwards. And so I know it's hard to see, but the number's going up, right? And so if I want to scroll to the right, I'm going to scroll and I'm going to tilt it up. So the first time I found this, I was very confused. I was like, why, why are the numbers changing? I, I've never seen this before. But once I learned that it was based off of the incline while, while I'm adjusting the computer, I was very, very happy with it. I, it's just, you, it takes a little bit of getting used to if you come from a lot of different computers or kind of older computers. Um, but once you figure it out, it's really easy. You know, rather than clicking, 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 and then you miss something. So, but that's something that we'll see. Uh, uh, that's something that we'll see uh, more of. So, mixture setup. You can see here. I have air. I have nitrox fifty, oxygen, nitrox thirty two, and then I have different other mixes as well. So, I'm going to jump into. Let's see. Now, as I've selected my mix. Make sure you guys can get a good shot and see it. So as I select my mix, I have um, I have my tank size and my pressure. Now this is uh, now the the tank size is something that's very interesting because this is based off a coefficient that's uh, it's essentially a formula between um, liters and um, cubic feet. So in metric, it's based off of um, liquid liters and in imperial it's based off of cubic feet so it's kind of a happy medium if you're curious about if you're more curious and have questions about the tank size and how to implement that into the freedom as well as inside the liberty uh, shoot us an email and uh, we'll uh, kind of work on it on an individual basis 
But so my guess. So you can see my number is dropping a lot. So I'm going to flatten it out. And then I'm going to raise it up to 50%. So I have it set to 50% now. Now, in order to jump between the different like active gases, I have to tilt it, right? And then I want to activate it. So if I scroll down, nothing happens. But if I scroll up, it becomes selected. Ooh, ah. All right. So we have our gas, tank size, pressure. And then you can see here on gray, it, it says my maximum operating depth and my equivalent narcosis depth. You can see here that it's selected because I activated it. Now when I go, uh, if I do my decompression switches and I have it set for optimal gas mix, it's going to, the computer is going to automatically jump to the best mix on my um, decompression on my ascent plan. Now I can also set it to where I choose which gases go when. Uh, so I can either choose uh, whichever way to do it. But that this is how we do it. So if you want to use it during the dive, you need to make sure that it's it's selected and that it's active. All right. I hope I'm not talking too much. So we have our mixture set up, our defined open circuit mix, our ending pressure, and then kind of these switches. If we're just kind of jump in for a simple uh, single tank dive on air, we want to make like to go through it quickly. We check it, we verify it, and then it's good. So double click to go back. We have alarms. Now we have alarm sources and notifications. So remember that I said that the Freedom has vibration alarms. The vibration alarms are very, very good. Um, it's much better than an audio alarm. An audio, an audio alarm, a lot of times if you're wearing a neoprene hood or heavy undergarments, or I'm sorry, not heavy undergarments, but neoprene hood, you're not going to hear it as, as well as you would feel it. Um, now, if you're wearing heavy undergarments, sometimes it's a little bit harder to feel it. But the alarms also kind of gives you a visual. So you get a visual and you get an, uh, a tactile where we feel the alarm. It's, it's really, really good. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think every computer should have that. So we, you basically have the different alarm screens. Uh, we have our decompression stop. If you miss it, it'll give you an alarm. You can turn that on or off. Then we have a CNS alarms. So central CNS central nervous system alarms, uh, our descent rate, if we're exceeding our descent rate, our ascent rate, we want to have it turned on, and then our low battery. So that's based off the percentage, 25%. Notifications are no decompression. And so decom uh, I'm sorry, a notification is going to be different than an alarm. An alarm is going to be an emergency. A notification is basically, it's obviously just letting you know. So we have a notification for our no decompression end, deco stop, uh, gas switch reminder. So it's telling you, okay, you're at your depth, you're at 70 feet, switch to your 50%. Or um, maybe probably Probably be a little bit shallower because of 1.4 PO2. Uh, guess time. So we'll dive into that. So you can we can have a notification for each depth. So say I'm hitting 100 feet, but I want to be notified when I hit 173 feet. So I can set it to where it will notify me at this depth. I want an alarm, or at this time I want an alarm. Um, these are really good for, I mean, for a variety of purposes, but they're very good for kind of like if you're diving on a project, if you if you want to, you know, if it, you can, it really gives you kind of an open book on how to set up your dive and how particular you want to be. That's kind of the goal of the freedom is the freedom wants to give you the most options possible. And then you have air brake notifications. Break above a percentage of oxygen, break after some amount of time, and then length. So, all right, and so we're going to go back. So we're out of the alarms. Now it has free diving. I'm gonna, 
I know this is a lot of information, so I just want to make sure that like I can kind of keep everybody engaged and <clears throat> I'll start kind of moving a little bit faster. So we have free diving set up. Basically, the free diving setup is just at what depth do you want the computer to turn on and engage? And, uh, and then you have the on depth, the activation depth, and then you have the deactivation, the off depth. Now we have under setup our preferences. Now with the preferences do, uh, we can adjust the displays. You can change the orientation, the brightness. Maybe we can lower it down a little bit. Maybe that'll be easier to see up close. There we go. So it's not too bright. So we have our screensaver. Maybe, maybe let me pump it up a little bit. Brightness. I'm going to boost it up a little bit. Maybe it's too much. I don't know. But so, and then we have our screensaver mode. Our screensaver mode is basically the timer that the screen will mute and it will just kind of go dark. I like using this in the in the caves because the screen is actually very, very bright. And so I'll adjust it and so I can mute the screens if I'm not constantly looking at it. Menu highlight, basically, if you're selecting, it'll blow up the um, kind of the words. So I can say that it's it's all highlighted or none of it's highlighted. You can see that the font size is smaller. So then we have our screens. So we have a lot of really cool screens. We have a detailed screen, synoptic screen, big screen, and a profile screen. So it's just it's a lot of different options of what you can see as you're diving. Uh, I love the big screen. Um, it also has a feature where you can have it as a uh, a backup torch. Essentially, the entire screen goes white in a, in a cave and underwater. It's very, very bright. It's like a, a fourth light. Here it talks about our uh, what on open circuit when you're diving the screen has it's the fourth row. Like what feature, what kind of part do you want to have on there? Here we have it set to where it tells you your floor. Your, the deepest depth that you can go without incurring more time on your total time on the surface. You can change it to average depth or your floor. So we go back. We have our timeouts. 10 minutes. It will turn, it'll turn off. I'm going to keep that maximized. So I got it set to 26 minutes. Prepared idle 15 minutes. So that means it's ready to go diving, but you, but you haven't gone diving yet You set it on the park bench in 15 minutes. It'll turn it'll kind of ask if you want to turn it off Dive termination. So that's 10 minutes at the end of a dive and then Dive and confirm so basically this reminds you once you're done diving once it's determined that it's out of the water Do you want to end your dive? I have it turned off. So I'm gonna have that on Dive time, I have it set to auto. So that's the time that I'm underwater. It'll automatically kick on and, and go through the time. We have our user interface. So the user interface is the units I want to do. I want to do it in units American, or I want to do units rest of the world, metric. But I'll keep it, since we're in Florida, I'm going to keep it in Imperial. We have our checklist. So a check, just the checklist, it's basically a reminder. It kind of goes through. Uh, it's like, do you have your air on? Do you have whatnot on? Um, so it's a checklist that's enabled on the computer right before you jump. Plan order, uh, delay on the keys with the buttons. So like we were saying, it has a lot of features um, on the computer to really kind of, so you can really customize it and really make it for the kind of diving that you're doing. So... The navigation is based off of a tilt, and it just tells you your incline. There's an inclometer inside, and that's and it's based off of tilting. <clears throat> Gas shortcuts from the top. So from the top screen, from the home screen during a dive, I can click a button and I can get to which gas did I want to change, what mix I want to use very quickly. We have the vertical rate, you know, units per minute, and then. Uh, stopwatch between so we have it based off of ncr
fresh water, and then default open circuit, free diving, gauge mode, open circuit. And then am I going to determine a full log or do I want a simplified log? So a full log uncompressed uh, is about five times bigger. I do not want the full log. So, so I turn it off. So it's so it's basically has, does it's less memory on the computer. Calibrations. How to calibrate the the Freedom computer? We have our horizontal calibration. We have our pressure and temperature. So for horizontal, it's very very easy. I'm going to click it, and now it's going to ask me place device horizontally. I got a flat table right here. I'm going to click it, it's calibrating, and then I'm going to place it vertically, and I'm going to click it. All done. That's it. So we're still in our setup. We did our calibration with miscellaneous. So that's how you, where you set our date and time. This is where we set the owner, and then you have our factory defaults as well. So if you're in the United States and you have any problems with the Freedom, depth sensor, it's not working, a button's not responding anymore, um, which has happened uh, because of our because there's a mag because it's magnetic. We've had some uh, some of the original models have had some issues with the buttons not responding because you have silt or kind of gunk inside. Um, it's a very quick fix. You send it to us, we fix it and no time flat and then we'll get it right back to you it's really handy us being here in florida we're pretty close to you guys we can serve it to you uh try to get you that two-day prime prime shipping so we have our setup now in our main menu uh now planning a dive system check applications and owner info uh, make sure that you guys can see really well so if we want to plan our dive, the way that we do it on the, on the Freedom computer is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have our surface interval, target depth. So I'd say that like a 60-minute surface interval, 100 feet, 30 minutes, bottom time, bottom mix, air, and then I click plan dive. So you can see here it says I have insufficient gas. So it's based off of uh, I'm diving with the single tank. But it gives me all the information that I need. My surface interval, depth, duration, bottom mix. What's my no deco? Nine minutes. The total time to surface, 10 minutes. Uh, what's my total run time is going to be 40 minutes. CNS, no fly. And I, as I scroll down, you can see that because I had it selected to where it goes to the optimal mix, it go it, and I had all of those different gas mixes activated, it basically said I dove air, and then I swapped to 32%, I swapped to 50%, and then I swapped to oxygen. So this is the cubic foot based off of that high RMV that we saw earlier. So this is the amount of cubic foot demands that are going to be for that dive. And then what is the dive plan going to look like on circuit? You can see that it's color-coded here to really help with the distinction, make it real easy to see. At 98 feet, we're going to be there for 29 minutes, and then just it's just showing you kind of how it changes how it goes on your runtime of your dive plan so it's uh very straightforward real easy to put together then i can simulate the dive or i can save it as default so system check just to kind of go through this it tells you your serial number version build date what licenses you have here and your serial number, and then your settings. What are your current settings that you have on the Freedom computer? What's my battery life? You can see I'm at 91%. I have uh, 3.837 volts. Uh, my runtime is about nine hours. Pressure sensor, temperature, surface, altitude. Okay, we're in, you know 198 feet. And then the, what version I have here. So that's... That's our system check. Now the cool stuff are applications. So if you guys joined us for the mixed gas analyzer talk, we sh I showed you guys this little dongle. So this guy is our simple gas analyzer. So basically inside we have our oxygen sensor in here. 
you just screw it in and then this can screw in here on the top and it's going to be right here so i can take a gas and i can analyze it which i got a bottle sitting right here for you guys so to show this analyzer i'm going to kick it on right and we should calibrate with uh, ambient air so i'm going to tell that we have ambient air in here we don't have any nitrox blowing so 21 percent and then to make to see how i can get it to where you guys can see so i'm not covering the screen Oh, I don't think this is going to work very well. So basically, you're going to hold it right up to it. And then it's a little hard to see on this camera. There we go. Got it. So I'm just going to open it real gentle. There you go. Now we have we have ambient air in the bottle, but you can see once we analyze it, then you click save, and we can save it as the open circuit mix. Very handy, really good. I really appreciate that. I really like it in case I get some you know odd mixes wherever I'm going diving. Now, let's see, save. Um, I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go back. So I'm going to take off this analyzer. I'm going to go to my applications because last but not least, we have our inclometer, emergency torch. Then we have the Sokoban game and the snake game, which if you guys are underwater and trying to play this game, it's kind of a little bit hard. I know for me it's a little difficult. So, but this is based off, uh, see right there, terrible. I'm going to try it again. So, this is a little difficult to show off. And then, uh, now, I'm not going to play this the whole time while we're doing the gear talks. But, I'm actually doing pretty good, so I might keep this going. No, I'm kidding. All right. So you can see it's it's actually kind of a fun game. It's kind of the old cell phone games like you had like on Nokia's. Uh, oh, new world record. All right. So a couple of games. The, the Sokoban game, I don't play that very much, but it's still pretty fun. The Inclometer, the Emergency Torch. Boom, that's it. <laughs> so in a dark cave where there's no light, this is actually pretty bright. It's pretty handy, but um, it's it's a nice little trick. So, pretty cool. All right. So, anyways, I think I ta talked uh, talked to y'all's ears off. Uh, I think we talked enough about the Freedom Computer, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of our Dive Soft Gear Talks. It was a lot of information. A lot of me just you know babbling away but hopefully i kind of answered some questions that you guys might have had uh if you're enjoying these gear talks episode be sure to let us know if you want to show off some other particular equipment if you want to see what this big ring is on this tent on this liberty um yeah be sure to ask um we will be we're going to be continuing to do more episodes we've got more stuff coming up uh, we have so much equipment to talk about it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, this week on Thursday, don't be, uh, don't forget to join us for our Dive Soft Dive Talks Live. Uh, Marissa Eckert is going to be my guest. Um, she's a good friend of mine, a fantastic dive instructor, and a great cave instructor as well. So, don't forget to join that. All right. Well, thank you guys very much, and we will see you guys on Thursday. Bye bye. <laughs>